Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Thursday Night Bible Study. God bless you as you're coming on. We'll just wait for folks. Enjoy this song. I give him thanks. Praise God. We're giving God thanks tonight, everybody, as you're coming on. Amy, Patrick, always great to see you on. Peggy Sue, God bless you. Peggy, you'll like this. It's Brooklyn Tabernacle. This is Alvin Slaughter with Brooklyn Tabernacle singing thanks. God bless you too. Diane, God bless you as you're coming on. Darlene, God bless you as you're coming on. Great to have everybody on tonight. Ruth, my sister. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Is that Joe? God bless you and Ginny. Enjoy this song. Thanks. Minor. Dios bendiga mi hermano. Maria, God bless you. Isn't God good? Just God bless you as you're coming on tonight. I hope you can hear this. This is Brooklyn Tabernacle. Joan, God bless you. Everyone who's coming on tonight, we're blessed. Just waiting for folks to join us. We're giving God thanks. Candy, God bless you. Yes, one of my favorites too. Ruth, Denise, God bless you. Thomas, God bless you tonight. Christina, thank you for joining us. Thanks. God bless you, Mary. Please share, everybody, as we wait for folks to come on tonight. Deborah, Mal, good evening to you, too. Sandra, God bless you. Come on, my soul is at rest as we give God thanks. Thanks is a confession of faith. Amanda, God bless you. Oh, thank you, Amy, for sharing. He's worthy to be praised. We're blessed. Jim, God bless you. Bertie, God bless you. Hallelujah. Good evening to you too, Maria. Venice, God bless you. Yes. How many will give God thanks tonight for all he's done? He's worthy to be praised. Oh, bless his holy name. Michelle, God bless you as you're coming on. Just another minute. Norma. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. Marguerite, God bless you. Yes. Yes, he's worthy to be praised. Well, welcome everybody tonight. God bless you. Thank you for joining us on our Thursday night Bible study. Please share this, get this out to as many as so we can encourage people's faith tonight uh, and grab your Bibles as we get ready to start. We're going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13 tonight. We're going to go into the love chapter and pull a very important uh, uh, message from the Apostle Paul to the Church of Corinth uh, concerning our lives Destiny and Laura, glad you joined. What a blessing to have you join us tonight. We're just so blessed at KWC to have just such wonderful people. You're all wonderful people. The children of God, the citizens of the kingdom, the join heirs with Jesus Christ. That's who you are. If you're washed in the blood of Jesus, your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. You're sealed by the Holy Spirit. You are kings and priests and you are reigning as kings, as Paul said and I would to God, as Paul said to the church, that I would reign with you. Amen. Praise God. So, Hela, God bless you for joining us tonight also. But uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, as we get ready to study, I told you uh, three, three very essential things that we must have in our life and allow to work in our lives right now to stay strong, uh, especially in these times. Uh, you know, again, I can't emphasize enough, we're living in the one of the most prolific times in all of human history. 
do you know that these times, these end times that we're literally watching in real time play out, there's more prophetic word concerning these times than any other times in scripture. And so we're living in, in the most prophetic time. I believe the most significant time in all human history is when Jesus came and died on the cross and rose from the dead because without that, we could not be saved. We could not be the children of God. We could not inherit the promises of God or the kingdom of God. But, you know, think about how many prophecies concerning these days in which we live are in your Bible. I mean, it is, it is throughout Scripture. Uh, we, you know, you look at the book of Daniel, the book of Ezekiel, the book of Zechariah. Uh, you know, you look at the book of Malachi. You look at Matthew, uh, Matthew uh, 24, Luke 21, Mark 13, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And you look at the whole book of Revelation. You even look at the book of Jude where the Bible says the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints. We are living in such powerful prophetic times. Uh, and these are awesome times for us as believers as the return of the Lord re, uh, approaches. But these are becoming more and more difficult times for unbelievers and for the world and for the backslidden and even for the religious in the church and those who are not living by faith. These are, gonna, these are very difficult times ahead and very challenging times. But even though these things are happening, we can advance our lives in this moment of time. Even though it's prolifically prophetic and it's, 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 the Bible says that perilous times shall come, uncertain, dangerous times, the Bible prophesies concerning the time we live, we can still advance our lives, we can still be blessed, we can still prosper, we can still increase, we can still multiply, we can still be sustained, and we can still be blessed to be a blessing. We still can preach the gospel, build the kingdom, and be the light of the world. We can be all of that because of, of the very nature of God that lives inside of us and Jesus who lives in us. And tonight I want to talk about three very significant things. We've heard them before, but many times we need a review in our lives. And, and like I said on Sunday to our church, just because you heard it doesn't mean you're going to do it. Just because you heard it doesn't mean it's going to happen. Just because you heard it doesn't mean you're going to experience it. It requires active faith. It requires to step out on what God has promised and to live out, out in our lives daily. These three things are found in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I'm going to talk a little bit about them tonight and how you can allow them to live and be active in your life so that in these last days you can remain strong and look at all this news and say, it doesn't move me, it doesn't shake me, I'm not afraid, I'm not scared, I'm not even worried about my life because I know I know who I have believed and I know that with God all things are possible and that promise is not contingent on good times, it's contingent on all times and I want us to get that faith inside of us. The Lord really spoke to me strong. He said, I want you to preach faith like you've never preached before. I want you to get faith into the heart of the people of God because it's faith that's going to carry you through all of these times. With all things, remember this, all things are possible. All things are possible to them that believe. That, uh, that nothing is impossible for them that believe. And so faith can cause us to triumph in these prolific, prophetic times, especially the end times that we live. We are living in the end times, folks. You look at these nations now that are accepting Bitcoin as their currency you're looking in UK, they just started uh, offering the chip under the hand to, as your identification and as your ability to purchase. They're doing that in the European Union. You look at all the things that are happening and even the threats of nuclear war, and now they're talking about World War III. Man, Jesus is coming soon. But we are most triumphant. Amen. We are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ our Lord continually. So let's get in this as I was just... Uh, monologuing a little bit there as more people are coming on. 
1 Corinthians chapter 13, three things that you must allow to live inside of you daily for success in the kingdom. The Bible says, though I speak with the tongues of man and angels and have not love or charity, I am becoming a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can move mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. So you can imagine that. You can prophesy and be one of the greatest prophets. You can, uh, you can have all knowledge and understand all mysteries and all prophetic mysteries. You can release your faith, as Jesus said. Jesus said, if you had uh, faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say unto the mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast in the sea, and it would have to obey you. Paul says, if you do all of that outside of love, you're nothing. The Bible then goes on and says, and though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not love, I profit me nothing. So you can be charitable without love. It can be self-serving. You can, you can go through persecution. And if you do it out of love, it's nothing. Here's he said, Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself. It is not puffed up. Uh, it, is not, it doesn't brag about itself. It doesn't promote itself. And the Bible says, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own. It is not easily provoked to think no evil. The Bible says, rejoice not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things. I want you to, I want you to get that in your spirit right there. That's, we're going to go a little bit further in this, but here's this. It beareth all things, it, it believes all things, and it hopes all things. That's love. And it endureth all things. That's the power of love. But, but it, 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 key there is it believeth and hopeth all things too. Love never fails, the Bible says. But whether there be prophecies, they will fail. So now he's talking about the end of time because the prophetic utterance and the gift of prophecy will continue till it's no longer needed. And one day it's no longer going to be needed. And that day is coming soon at the return of Jesus when the eternal kingdom is set up on the earth. The Bible says that when, uh, whether, uh, whether there be prophecies, they're going to fail. They shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. There's coming a day when tongues is going to cease. Whether there be knowledge, it will be vanished away. Uh, so these, uh, all of this is going to go someday. When? We're getting close to that time where these things will no longer be needed on the earth. And the Bible says, for we know in part and we prophesy in part. So we only know a little bit, folks. There's stuff that we still don't know. Uh, there's still things that we don't fully comprehend and understand. Even Paul said uh, there's not enough words it, 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 to be able to speak about what he witnessed in eternity when he went there. We only know a little bit. The Bible says, but when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part shall be done away with. The only one perfect is the Lord. There's none holy, there's none perfect, but the Lord. So when the Lord comes, praise God, the Bible says that all of these other things are going to be done away with. So we're leading up He's talking here about the end of time. And he's talking about the there's only one th few things that will remain even after time ceases. And when the eternal kingdom comes, there's only a few things that will remain. Verse 11, when I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly. So he's saying we're only seeing a little bit of everything that's going on. We see what's going on in the world right now. It's much of it's lining up with Bible prophecy, but there's still things that we have that haven't been given unto us. And even Daniel was told to seal up the prophetic books and the things that he saw until the end. And the Bible says, but when then face to face, now I know in part, but then shall I know even as I am known. Somebody asked me the other day, are we going to be known in heaven? Sure we are. The Bible says, then we will be known even as we are known. So I will know you in heaven. You will know me in heaven. I don't know if we're going to look the same, 
But remember, what makes us up is our soul and our spirit, not this natural body. But here he's talking about when things, when everything comes to an end, there's only a few things that are going to remain. And these are the things in these end times that we must allow uh, to be completely alive in us, active in us, and working in us, and us working in it to sustain ourselves and to see God do some extraordinary things and, 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 and to maintain our lives in total victory. Praise God. Now, verse 13, and now, here's what he said, and now, after prophecy cease, after knowledge ceases, after, after tongues cease, after everything that we, uh, even though we prophesy in part, know in part, uh, we're going to know someday everything, but at, that's all going to be known at the end of time. And then he says this, verse 13, and now abideth, I, I'm going to re read it from a different version, now abideth faith, hope, and love, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. These are the three things I want to focus on tonight and how significant they are to keeping you in a very strong position in your life. Now, he says this, now abideth faith, hope, and love. The, I'm, I don't normally quote from the New Living Translations, but it gets it right here. It says that, it says that faith, hope, and love uh, will be forever, meaning for they, they are eternal, which means that in eternity, they'll be no longer needed for prophetic utterance. Why? Because prophecy, uh, much a lot of prophecy is foretelling the future, and, uh, and there will be no need for that because eternity has no time. You, you won't need knowledge anymore because the moment you step into eternity, the Bible says you're going to know everything just as you are known. You're going you're gonna to understand all mysteries at that point. So there's going to be no longer the need of knowledge like we know it. And, uh, and no longer needing of tongues because we have entered into the eternal kingdom of God. And he's saying here that after eternity, once eternity comes, these things will be done away with. But faith, hope, and love are forever. I want you to put that up on the screen for me. Faith, hope, and love are forever. That's what the New Living Translation says. Uh, the King James says, abideth, really abideth forever, meaning they will never depart, they will never disappear, they will abide. They, they're, they are unremovable. You can't remove faith, hope, and love. So when we enter into eternity, family, faith, hope, and love will continue to exist in eternity and does exist in the eternal heavens right now. Praise God. These are, these are eternal things. And remember, Jesus said, do not, do not uh, store up on the earth where, wrath, where moth and rust and thieves uh, can steal and these things can corrupt, but lay yourself up treasure in heaven. You know, one thing we have to allow ourselves, number one, is to sow into, for, the, for, for eternity and sow into things that can never be removed. But it's also important to allow these things that can never be removed and will be operating in eternity to live in us today. I hope that all made sense to you. So, so we see here faith, hope, and love. These are eternal. These last forever. And since we are getting close to the end of time and the last days, I felt by the Holy Spirit to speak tonight in this Bible study to teach you tonight why that is so important to a allow these things to live in you and why they are absolutely eternal. Well, let's first go into understanding, are these three things found in the nature of God? Are these three things found in the nature of God? Great question. Does God love? Yes, he does. Does God hope? There are people who say, no, God doesn't need to hope, but I'm going to teach them they're wrong. Does God operate by faith? Some say, no, he doesn't need. He's all powerful. He's all knowing. Yes, but God does operate by faith. That's what releases the power of God. And that's what releases the power of the kingdom. For example, does God hope? Is hope in God? Well, the Bible says 
in Romans 15, 13. If you want to turn there, you can. Romans 15, 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you might abound in hope. So he is the God of hope. He is the God who is hope. So hope is in God. And I'm going to come back and explain these things, how they operate in your life tonight. The God of hope and how significant hope is, especially in these last days when it seems like hope is disappearing. And we're living now in a very uh, unstable time, economically, financially, politically, educationally, uh, emotionally, uh, uh, and health-wise. This is a very unstable time. So unstable that I just read an article today that the Toronto uh, real estate market has dropped 22% in the last, the last week. So we can see, fam, I told you that these polit- there's going to be a, 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 you know, a great recession, even a depression and, and, and an economic disaster. That's what they want to usher in the global government. There's a lot of, uh, there's no hope for, for unbelievers, but there's a lot of hope for us right now. And we've got to keep that thing active in our lives so that we don't get swallowed up. Now, here's what he says. May the God of hope fill you with all joy. May the God of hope, hope fills you with joy. Hope fills you with with peace. Hope works with faith. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in that hope. And I'll explain hope in a second. So hope, God does hope. How do we know? 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 7, which we just read. Love hopes all things. Love hopes all things. I'll explain what hope is, and you'll understand it even more when we talk about it relating back to who God is. So, love hopes. Now we know this. Is love in God? Yes. For the Bible says in 1 John 4, 7, that God is love. So, 1 John 4, 7, 1 John 4, 8, and 1 John 4, 16, God is love, the Bible says. So, since God is love, and love hopeth all things, then God is a God who operates also by great hope. Now, we need to define what hope is, not from a religious point of view or a secular worldly point of view, but from a biblical kingdom point of view, we have to define what hope is and how it operates. We'll do that in a second. Now, God also operates by faith. God is love. 1 John 4, 7, 8, 16, 4, chapter 4, verse 7, 8, and 16. God is hope, Romans chapter 15, verse 13. And God exercises and operates by faith. So if these things are in God, who is eternal, he's not limited by time or space. He was in the beginning, he's in the end, he's forever, evermore. If all of those things are in God, then all of those things are eternal. And that's why Paul says, in the, in the love chapter, although the gifts of the Spirit will end, although the need of ministry will end in eternity like it is on the earth, he's, he's saying, although tongues will cease on the earth, he's saying, faith, hope, and love abides or is forever. Because why? Because God is forever and God is all of these things and God operates. So heaven will have, this is going to be good when I explain it to you, heaven will have hope, eternity has faith, and eternity is filled with love. Praise God. Heaven, let me say that again. Heaven has love, eternity is filled with love, eternity is filled with faith, and eternity is filled with hope. Praise God. Isn't that beautiful? Now, we must allow those things to live in us right now on the earth especially leading into these very perilous, uncertain, unstable times, leading up to the rapture of the church, which we don't know how long that's going to be, and neither do we know what the world is going to become leading up to the rapture of the church. We know the tribulation, it's going to be devastation, but leading up to the rapture of the church, there's going to be still challenging times as we know, but not for you and I, 
if we live and allow faith, hope, and love to work through us and us to work in it. Now, God operates by faith. People say, does God operate by faith? He's all powerful, but he operates by faith. Mark chapter 11, Mark chapter 11. Uh, if you have your Bible, go there. Mark chapter 11, verse 22. Mark chapter 11, verse 22. Does God operate by faith? Yes. Does God, does God hope? Yes, he does. Uh, when I explain it a little bit more as we go on. Is God love? Does God operate by love? Absolutely. For God so loved the whole world. But Mark chapter 11, verse 22. And Jesus said unto them, have faith in God. The proper interpretation of scripture there is have the faith of God. So, and Jesus answered and said unto them, have faith, the faith of God of God. Uh, you Have the faith in God is not bad. We should have faith in God, but have the faith of God. So God is God operates by faith. When he speaks, he believes what he says. When God has confidence and God has trust in who he is, and God believes that when he speaks, it will not return unto him void. God, God believes, God believed that he could raise his son Jesus from the dead. The Bible says that the heavens and were fashioned, we, by faith, we believe the heavens were fashioned and formed by God. It's all by faith. And it's all by love. And it's all in the context of hope. Praise God. Now, God is, how do we know God has, God has faith? God is faith also. Because the Bible says in Romans 12, 3, given, uh, given unto every man and, and every woman is the measure of faith. God gave what he had, which was faith to us. Praise God. The gift of faith is God giving us his faith for a specific purpose. Hallelujah. 2 Peter 1.1. 1, 1. Let's go there real quick. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 1. So God is love. God operates with hope. God also, praise God, operates by faith. And since we want to be in tim imitators of Christ, let's do that the same in this hour and watch the awesome things that happen for us, even in perilous times. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 1. The Bible says, Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. We have obtained faith through the righteousness of God. We have retained, obtained faith from God. Hebrews 12, uh, Hebrews chapter 12, you're very next door, you're right next door. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2 says this, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. He's the one who designed, he's the one who wrote our faith. He's the one who created our faith and the finisher of our faith. So he's the one who will complete our faith. Uh, who for the joy that was set before, endured the cross, despising the shame, sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. The Bible says that, you know, he is the one who designed our faith, wrote our faith, and the one who finishes our faith. So why is Paul saying that at the end of everything, the only three things that will definitely abide forever is faith, hope, and love. So if they're carrying into eternity, then we carry them today and we operate in them today. Why? Because how strong it's going to make you be in this hour. I promise you this, the more you allow these three things to operate in your life and understand them, the less worried you will be right now. There's people really worried in the church right now even about what's going on. Am I worried? Not for me. Not for my children, not for you who are believing. Am I concerned about the world and I'm concerned about the condition of the world and what will happen to unbelievers who don't follow Christ? You better believe I'm concerned, but I'm not worried. Why? Because our lives are hidden in him and we belong to him and nothing's impossible for us who believe. And on top of that, the very nature of God lives in us which is faith, hope, and love. And God, through his word, has taught us how to activate, how to allow these things to live, and how we can reap the benefits of these three things. 
Now, allowing, I want you to break this down or make a mental note of it. In these perilous times, allowing these three to operate in us in this prophetic time will keep you constantly, get this, this is from the Holy Ghost, will keep you constantly optimistic and positive. Praise God. Allowing these three things to operate in your life right now, in these last days, in these Bible prophecy days, and everything that's going on, will keep you constantly optimistic and very positive. That's from the Holy Spirit. Faith, hope, and love will keep you in that realm. Thank you. I have found in my life when I don't allow myself to live and operate in those three things, I get discouraged, I get frustrated, I get angry, I get concerned, I get worried, I get anxious, I get all of those things. We're all humans. We go through those things. But when I operate with that nature of God that lives inside of me, faith, hope, and love, I'm not any of that. I am positive. I am optimistic and I, I can believe. When my children and I went through a very difficult time, our family went through a very difficult time, and when, when, we, when everything was taken from us a few years back unjustly, people were concerned, but I, people came to me and said, what are you going to do? I said, we're going to rebuild. We're going to rebuild. We're going to rebuild stronger, and we're going to be better. We're going to be more powerful. We're going to be more blessed than we ever were in our lives. And the reason why is because I had just been on a fast with the Lord and I was operating in that realm of faith, hope, and love. I tell you, and, I, and, and that's what we're doing and that's what we have done and we have remained positive and we refuse. Listen to me. Let me give you a testimony. I refuse to allow my enemies and my critics and those who attack, who have attacked us, and people, and you, we all get attacked, right? We refuse to allow them to remove out of us the God-given destiny, purposes, and promises that God gave to us. And the way we keep those things alive and stay optimistic and positive is to allow that eternal, those eternal attributes of faith, hope, and love to work in us, to us to operate in them, and us to, and us to li- activate them. And I want to encourage you in these last days, wherever you're at in your life, you can be there. You can be there. Praise God. You can look at the world and say, you know, if all the money dries up, what are we going to do? You can look and say, no way, nothing. I'm going to be just fine. If God has to rain down manna from heaven into my backyard, he will. Praise God. If God has got to turn, bring water from a rock for me, he will. My God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. I have optimism and I'm positive. Why? Because I understand the power of love. I understand the power of faith and I understand the power of hope. These are eternal things that can never be done away with. They can never be destroyed. They can never be removed. Somebody say, praise God. And, And nobody can take them from you. Not even the devil can take them. He can get you to stop operating in them, but he can't steal them from you. Come on now. Praise God. uh, uh, You've got them inside of you. You just got to let them live in you. You live in them and allow them to operate through you. Let's Let's talk about love. Why is it important to have this attribute in these prophetic end times and these perilous times that are arising in the earth? Why is it important? Because we know the scripture, some of us, it's going to, and, and, and all, many of you do. We're just going to encourage your faith. 1 John 4.18. 1 John 4.18. Go there real quick. 1 John 4.18. That's where we find that God is love. But John says something a little bit further in this. 1 John 4.18. 1 John 4, 7 says, Beloved, let us love one another for, God, for, the, for love is of God or God is love. 18 says this. There is no fear in love. Praise God. There is no fear in love. With everything crumbling, with everything uncertain, 
with all of this corruption and all of these scams and plans of the enemy working in the sons of disobedience on the earth, the Bible says there is no fear in love. Hallelujah. The Bible says, but perfect love casts out all fear because fear has torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in that love. Praise God. So, why do we want to operate in these three things? Because, number one, it'll drive fear right out of our lives. It'll drive fear right out of our lives. People say the opposite of fear is faith. Uh, but that, there's truth to that. But really, the opposite of fear or the antidote, or how about this, the vaccine, the true vaccine to fear is love. Hallelujah. And you can see what they're trying to do, dear saints of God. They are trying to put everybody into fear right now. We've, we've seen it for two years now. They've been trying to torment and put people into fear. Why? That's what these global dictators always do. This is what dictators do. This is what the devil does. Because they can control people when they put them in fear. A man or a woman that is filled with love and filled with hope and filled with faith and filled with God, you can't control that person. Now, this is why the enemy hates us. And this is why the unrighteous hate us. Because they can't control us. Because... They can't manipulate us. They can't put fear that we, we'll take everything from you. It doesn't matter. God's my source. Well, we'll kill you. Well, I'll go to heaven. Praise God. Well, we'll, 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 we'll come after you. Well, God is my shield. Hallelujah. You see, when you, have, when you operate in that attribute of love, you drive fear right out of your life. Hallelujah. And I refuse. I refuse to live by fear when I serve the God who is love and his perfect love alive in my life. That's why the Bible says that he that feareth is not perfect in love, meaning he's not allowed the love of God to work in his or her life. We're allowing the love of God to work in us. It drives that fear right out of our lives. Oh, isn't he an awesome God tonight? And even that happens for us in the end times. Now, the Bible also says this, uh, perfect love casts all fear. Now, you know this scripture, 2 Timothy 1 verse 7, for God has not given us the spirit of fear. So what we're seeing in the earth right now through these politicians is not from God. It's from Diablo. Uh, it is, uh, uh, you know, it's from the devil. And the devil is a liar. Uh, uh, I think it is in Espanol, Diablo es mentirosa. Is that it? The devil is a liar. The, you know, and so we, we see anytime fear is propagated on the earth, that's from the devil. It's not from God. God is not the giver of fear. And so you know, that's why we operate in this attribute from 1 Corinthians chapter 13 in the last days so that I can, I can rise above fear and I will not be controlled by it. I won't wake up fearful, afraid, scared, worried about what's going to happen to my family or my future. Am I going to make it through these times? You're going to make it through these times. Why? Because you serve the God who will carry you through and bring you into that blessing that he has promised you. Somebody give God a big praise. Amen. So God, God is a God of love. It's eternal. It is. It's on the earth. It will, it will be, it's in eternity. It will always be. It's everlasting as the New Living Translation says. So is faith. Faith is everlasting. Uh, but faith also, faith can't work by itself. These three things work together in conjunction with each other. Faith cannot work by itself. Galatians chapter 5 tells us this. Now we know what faith is. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Faith is the evidence of things not seen. Uh, that's Hebrews chapter 11. So we know, we, we know what faith is. But Galatians chapter 5 verse 6 tells us that faith cannot operate alone. It needs this other attribute. For in Christ Jesus, uh, for in, in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcised, but faith worketh 
which worketh through love. It's a faith that works through love. Why? Because love, listen to me, love is the antidote or the vaccine that destroys fear. And fear, if you're in the fear realm, then you cannot operate in the faith realm. If you're consumed by fear, you won't take steps of faith. And so that's why faith that works through love. We don't, we're not afraid, we're not afraid to die now because why? We have been perfected in the love of Christ. We have the love of God shed abroad of our love in our lives, and we we believe in him and we have eternal life through him because of his love. We're not afraid of death, we're not afraid of the grave, we're not afraid of hell, because there's no torment in love. We're free from all of that. But the Bible says that we need love to work with faith. Because love destroys fear. Perfect love drives out all fear. And fear is a hindrance to the operation of faith. But this attribute of fear, faith must operate on us in these last times. God has been speaking to me so strong. How important it is for the believers to work their faith right now. You have to start working your faith right now. Because faith is the currency of the kingdom. And if we're going to get anything out of the word of God, any promise fulfilled in our lives, and if we're going to extrapolate things from, from the spirit realm, the realm of the spirit, and the power of God, it's going to require faith. Hallelujah. The Bible also says in 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, What is it that overcometh this world? Even our faith. So love drives fear out. Faith conquers fear also. Faith is the opposite, meaning it brings the blessing. It brings the things of God. Fear will hinder that. But faith, faith, hallelujah, causes us to overcome this world. So I'm walking in, the, in, in, that, in that attribute of love. Now abideth faith, hope, and love. They're eternal. They're everlasting working in me and I'm living in them and it's living in me, I have no fear. I walk by faith, I overcome this world. No matter what this world throws, no matter what the global government throws, no matter what the spirit of Antichrist rising tries to put against me, I will overcome it. Why? Because of my faith in the Word of God. You will overcome it because of your faith in the Word of God and because your faith in the promise of God because you've activated your faith, you're working your faith, you're living by faith, and you're experiencing, even in difficult, troublesome, tribulation, persecuting times, the faith of God working inside of you will cause you to overcome them. Somebody say, praise God. So, and again, in these prophetic, uncertain times, these things must be alive in you. Now, faith and hope work together. We know that faith and hope work together. Love and faith. It's faith that works through love. But faith needs hope and hope needs faith. If there's no hope, there's no need for faith. If there's no faith, there's no fulfillment of hope. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, again, now faith is the substance of things that are hoped for. Meaning faith is the, 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 the uh, it is the, um, it is what holds hope up. It's the foundation of hope. It is what fulfills hope in your life. It is Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So faith says it is even when you can't see it. Faith believes it even when it can't see it. We walk by faith. We don't walk by sight, the Bible says. So getting that faith operating in our lives. Now let me give you a phrase. Without faith and hope, Christianity doesn't make sense. But with faith and hope, Christianity makes sense. This is why to the religious person and those who believe in justification by works and those who believe in doing religious rituals, they don't understand Christianity. You know why they don't understand Christianity? Because you can only understand how Christianity works when you understand faith and hope. Hallelujah. It's, it's, it's a salvation by faith and hope. It's a salvation that came by the love of God through faith and hope. So without hope and faith, Christianity doesn't work. And this is why the promises of God don't work for even a lot of Christians in churches. Why? Because they don't understand how faith and hope works. My heart breaks. 
for a lot of people in other churches because they haven't been taught how to walk by faith. They haven't been taught how to live by faith. They haven't been taught how to operate by faith. They don't understand what real, what real, really what hope is. And, uh, and that, thus they don't extrapolate out of the Christian faith or out of the kingdom more powerfully and the promise of God, the blessing and the success that God has promised us because of not understanding what faith and hope is. Again, these things are everlasting, folks. When everything else fails, that's what John uh, Paul says, when everything else ends, when everything else ceases, these three things are going to remain. How significant are they in these last days? Now, what is hope? we got a little time. Let me explain hope to you. Uh, hope is not wishing. Hope, can somebody put that up on the screen? Hope is not wishing. Hope is not a wish. Hope, put that up on the screen for me. Hope is not wishing, and hope is not luck. It's not luck. I know I'm Irish. People say the luck of the Irish. It's not luck. The kingdom is not about luck. And hope is not about wishing. People say, well, Paul said, John said, I wish above all things uh, that you may prosper and be in good health. No, he was, he was releasing his faith there for the people of God. There's a better interpretation than the word wish, the word wish there. He was releasing his faith for the people of God. Now, hope is not wishing and hope is not luck. That is the world. That is the world. You know, I've heard people say, well, uh, you know, you were lucky. No, I wasn't lucky. I was blessed. I'm not, you and I are not lucky. We are blessed. The kingdom is not about luck. It's not about chance. It's not about wishing. It's about it's about the word. It is about promises. It is about that which is sure, true, and guaranteed. Uh, that's, that's the kingdom of God. The word of God is established in the heavens forever. The promises of God are yea and amen. Yes and amen to the glory of his name. They're not about wishing. They're not about hoping. They're, they're not, none of that. Okay? They're real and they are firm and they're tangible and they're attainable by faith. Somebody say praise God to that, okay? Now, hope. What is true kingdom hope? What is true kingdom hope? Well, hope is this, family. Hope is expectation. That's what kingdom hope is. It is expectation. Is what are you expecting? It's the very thing that you are believing for. That's what hope is. And you're expecting it. You're confident. Hope is, kingdom hope is confidence. Let me, let me, let me, let me make it simpler. Kingdom hope is confident expectation. That's what kingdom hope is. It's what you are actually holding on to and believing for. Uh, the promises of God are a great hope. Eternity is a great hope. The rapture of the church is a hope. Hallelujah. Eternal life is hope. Eternal reward is hope. Um, you know, healing is hope. It's, it's, but it's not wishing and it's not chance. It's confident expectation. So when we say, when people say, oh, God doesn't hope, well, he wouldn't, you would be right if you were, if you, if you defined hope as God is the God of who, 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 who thinks, who hopes things come like, by chance or by luck, or maybe it'll come. That's not how God operates. God never thinks maybe. God doesn't think, could it be? God doesn't think, uh, will it be? God doesn't say, uh, I, 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 maybe I'll get lucky. God doesn't think that way. God thinks this way. God says, God has confident expectation on who he is, what he's promised, what he said, what he can do. That's God. Amen. Now, when you define hope that way, then you can say, now I understand how he is the God of hope. Praise God. That's why when I, when I get people saying, you can tell when people are not in the faith realm yet by their confession. So one of the things is, is when they, people come and ask me to pray, I say for them, I say, you, you want me to pray for you? And I say, I, do you believe that, uh, that uh, you will be healed? And th- many people say, well, I hope to be. I hope to be. That's that's not the you know right away they're not their understanding of hope 
is wrong. It's almost like, well, I, 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 I hope it happens, or maybe it'll happen, or by chance it'll happen, or by luck it'll happen. No, no. I get them to say, it will happen. Because hope is confident expectation. That's kingdom hope. That's biblical hope. Confident expectation. Now, why? let's put that in the context of 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Now abideth, these three things are everlasting all through eternity. And that is faith, love, hope, which is confident expectation. Hallelujah. Those things are going to happen in it. We're going to be expecting things in eternity. We're going to have confident expectations in eternity. You know, we're, we're, going to, we're, going to, we're going to rule and reign with Christ in eternity, family. So that means that uh, these, we're, we're going to operate by faith in eternity. We're going to operate uh, by confident expectation like God. Because that's how God operates. Hallelujah. We're not just going to sit around and eat chocolates throughout all eternity. Uh, we're going to be ruling and we're going to be reigning with Christ. Hallelujah. We're going to be doing awesome things in eternity. I I hope we don't just sit that back. Uh, so there's that hope. I don't want it, that blessed hope. I don't want to sit around through eternity and do nothing. I want, we want to see awesome. We're going to see awesome things in eternity. Somebody say, praise God. Amen. Now, so that hope is confident. Kingdom hope is confident expectation. Now, here's why this is important. This, this hope that's confident expectation to have operate in your life in these perilous times, in these end times, in these prolific Bible pr prophetic times. Why? Romans 5.5. 5. Romans chapter 5 verse 5 says this. And hope does not disappoint. Kingdom hope, biblical hope, God type of hope does not disappoint. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Because the love of God, there it is, now abideth faith, hope, and love. Hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us as believers. We have the Holy Spirit. That's it. Romans chapter 5. Thanks, Jenny. Romans chapter 5, verse 5. Hope does not disappoint us. Confident expectation won't disappoint you because the love of God has been poured out in your hearts. So there's faith needs hope. Hope needs faith. Faith needs love. Love stands on its own, but it only is obtained by faith. And, and love is a blessed hope. Praise God. But let me, let me say this to you. Faith needs hope. Hope needs faith. Faith needs love. Hope needs love also. That's what the Bible says. Now, verse uh, Hebrews 11, 1, we said that, it, I'll repeat it again. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the conviction or the evidence of things not seen. We need to live in that confident expectation. Are you ready for this? Of hope concerning the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, concerning the rapture of the church, because when things get challenging and things get more difficult on the earth, it won't consume us because our focus is not even on this earth. Our focus is on the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ who will redeem us from this earth. And then on top of that, I'm not concerned about what I have and what I don't have on the earth. I will believe God will sustain me on the earth. But I have confident hope that confident expectation that when I get into eternity, I'm going to be so blessed. I'm going to be blessed with a mansion. I'm going to be blessed with crowns. I'm going to be ruling and reigning with Christ. I'm going to have no sickness or disease. I, I'm going to be so highly that favor of God in heaven that I'll live in perpetually. There'll be no weeping. There'll be no mourning. There'll be no sorrow. There'll be no more pain. I have confident expectation that's why, that's why a believer, for those who are watching me, that's why a believer, a child of God, even on their deathbed, can be rejoicing and giving God praise. Why? Because of that hope and that confident expectation of eternity. And so that's so important, family. I have confident in you, have confident expectation. No matter what happens in the world, you will be sustained. 
you will be sustained. God will make sure that you have more than enough to live on this earth until the coming of the Lord. That's the hope that you have to operate in, that confident expectation. Praise God. When you wake up tomorrow, do you have confident expectation concerning the health in your body, concerning your mental state, concerning your family and your children, concerning your loved ones? I want to say this. Don't operate in fear concerning your unsaved loved ones. The fear doesn't bring the blessing of God. Don't operate in that. Operate on the promise of, uh, of God. Have great confident hope and expectation and allow faith to bring it into a reality that your family will come to Christ. Hallelujah. Because God is a God of generations. He's not just a God of the singular. He's the God of generations. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's the God, his, his, the, the blessing of God is for multiple generations, for a thousand generations. That's that confident expectation that God operates by that is in eternity. The faith that's in eternity, the love that's in eternity. When everything else fails, when everything else ceases, when everything else comes to an end, these things will abide forever, the Bible says. We let them live in us right now. Hallelujah. And we soar over all this junk. We soar over all this garbage, this can I even say all of this crap, all of this, all of this stuff that's going on in the world right now, none of this moves a man or a woman of God who allows these things to live in them and they're operating by them. Hallelujah. Somebody praise God. We maneuver through it all. We, with the mind of Christ, with the faith of God, with, with, with that confident expectation, with the knowledge and the, uh, and, and the leading of the Holy Spirit, man, we can... We can succeed. We can succeed in the most famineish, most destructive times because children of, uh, of Israel, pe- believers in the past, they did it, and so shall we because we're more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. Let me give you one more scripture for tonight and I'm going to close. I hope you're getting blessed tonight. Please share this. Verse uh, Hebrews 6 19. God did this so that by two unchangeable Things in which it is impossible for God to lie. It is impossible for God to lie. God is not a man that he should lie. So what you have in front of you, if you have your Bible in front of you, God cannot lie. So what he said, he will do, he intends to do, he will do, and he can do it. And he's not a liar. Here's what God did this so by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled to take hold of the hope, the confident expectation set before us may be greatly encouraged. (laughs) Hallelujah. That's why you need hope in your life because you will be greatly encouraged. Amen. Greatly encouraged. That'll give you strength today. Remember what hope, hope does not disappoint, the Bible says. And you will be greatly, I love that, greatly encouraged. Didn't I say to you earlier by the Holy Spirit that in these last days, in these perilous times, that if you'll keep these things alive in you and you will operate by them, that you will be constantly optimistic and positive because negativity is from the devil. There's nothing negative in heaven, family. There's nobody complaining in the kingdom of heaven, in, in, in the eternal heavens. There's no negativity. There's no worry. People are optimistic all the time. Why? Because we they because eternity is so blessed. And you and I can live. You know, let me say this. We quote this all the time, don't we? Don't we say, I'm seated in heavenly places, Pastor. Well, then live there. Come on, somebody, then live there. Don't just talk about it. Live there. I'm seated in heavenly places, pastor. You know, yeah, you are. Well, then live there. Live in the heaven realm. Live in the encouraged realm. Live in the faith realm. Live in the confident expectation realm. Live in the the love realm. Live in the positive realm. Live in the optimistic realm. Live in the encouraged realm. (laughs) Hallelujah. The Bible says... Uh, God cannot lie. We who fled to take hold of by faith, this hope, this confident expectation set before us, all of these promises, all of this prophetic promise before us, set before us, may 
always be greatly encouraged. We have this as a sure and steadfast anchor of our soul. I, I believe the Apostle Paul wrote this. Others don't, but that's okay. Steadfast anchor of our soul. Why hope? Because it's the steadfast anchor of our soul that keeps us encouraged. A hope, here's what he goes on and says, a hope that enters into the inner place behind, oh, I wish I had more time tonight. Look at that time. The inner place behind the curtain. What does, where does hope bring you in? It brings you into the glory realm. Oh, thank you, Jesus. It brings you behind the curtain into the holy of holies where the manifest Shekinah glory of God is. That's where hope brings you. That's the encouraged realm. That's the optimistic realm. That's the positive realm. That's the faith realm. That's the promise realm. That's the realm of love. That's the realm of victory. That's the realm of success. That's the realm of blessing and increase. Hallelujah. And that confident expectation, God says, encourages you and brings you behind that curtain where God is, into the glory realm. Oh, into the realm of his glory. Somebody and where Jesus, if you read, read on, paraphrase, it's where Jesus went on before us. We're going into that glory. We can live in the glory realm right now. One day we're going to be in the eternal glory where Jesus went on before us. But we can get there now in our spirit, in our mind, in our thinking. We can, we can be seated in heavenly places. To be seated in heavenly places, faith, hope, and love. Thank you. In the promises of God, in the blessing of God, in the anointing of God, in the glory of God. Well, that's enough for tonight. I hope you got, I hope you got a lot. I hope you got blessed by that tonight. Please share that. People need to hear this. There's a, there's a, lot, of, there's a lot of negativity in the world. There's a lot of negativity also in pulpits. Uh, we need, we need, to, we need to encourage the saints, not not flatten the saints. We need to build up the saints, not run over them. Uh, we got to bless them, Amen. We got to bless them. I'm going to teach Sunday. You don't miss Sunday at Kingdom Worship Center. I've been teaching. I taught on giving to the poor last week and how you can expect to be sustained. I'm going to teach on giving this week, but not the way you think I'm going to teach it. Uh, not the way you think I'm going to teach it. You don't want to miss it. Because I promise you this, God's teaching, telling me, teach my people that I've given entrusted to you and I've given you the ability to speak into their lives. So thank you for that, family and friends. He said, I want you to teach them, Peter, how to, how to, how to be overcomers and be blessed in these prophetic times. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to honor my Heavenly Father by sharing with you what the Holy Spirit puts into my spirit through the Word of God. Amen. I want to encourage you today that if you're not born again, Jesus Christ is not your Lord and Savior. You've never said, Jesus, I confess you as Lord and Savior of my life. If you've never believed on him and never confessed him as Lord, if you've never asked him to forgive you of your sins, if you don't know tonight that if you were to die, whether you would go to heaven, and I've been talking about the coming of the Lord. You don't even know what that is. And you don't know if he's coming for you. Then tonight, please go into the love realm, into the faith realm, into the hope realm, which is the realm of salvation. Salvation is there. That's where salvation comes from. The love of God. It comes by faith. And it comes because Jesus Christ is your great hope for eternal life. Please, tonight... Give your life to Jesus. He's coming soon. The rapture of the church. What I mean is the Lord's coming to take his people home to him in these last days, in these, in these end times, in these Bible prophecy times. Please give your life to Jesus Christ tonight. It's really easy. All you have to do is say, Dear Jesus, I believe in you. I believe in my heart that you died 2,000 years ago on a cross for me. I believe that you rose from the dead. I believe in you, Jesus, and I confess you as Lord and Savior of my life. I ask you to forgive me of all of my sins, and I ask you to save me. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Give me eternal life. Write my name down in heaven. I believe in you. Do that tonight, and you'll have eternal life, and you'll be a child of God. If you do that tonight, please reach out to me and tell me, Pastor, I committed my life to Jesus Christ 
tonight when you led this, when you showed us how to pray and led us in that prayer. Sunday, so wonderful, family. Down at, down at the end of service, I was packing up and a man walked up to me with tears in his eyes. And he said, Pastor Peter, I'd like to give my life to Jesus Christ. I want to be saved and I want to go to heaven. And I led that man to Christ. And then he asked me to pray for all of his family to come to Christ and to experience what he was presently experiencing. God is moving, family. And tonight I pray you get saved and come to Jesus. Amen. Well, God bless you, family. I declare you're strong in the Lord. Thank you for all your love, your support, your giving, your prayers, all that you do. If you'd like to give tonight, you can go to our website. The information's there. Uh, you can also e-transfer. I think it's uh, Kingdom Worship Center Ministries at gmail.com. That's up to you, family. People do ask me, so I do share it because of that reason. But I bless you, and I declare right now, by faith in your life, that faith, hope, and love are living and active in your mind, more importantly, in your spirit, and you are operating by them every day, and you're experiencing the blessing, the increase, and the success, and, and the victory of them living in you, you living in them, and, they, and you activating them daily. I just ask God to bless you in every way. I pray the Lord's face shines upon you. I pray the Lord gives you great rest and sleep and peace and victory and health and blessing and joy. And God provides for you and prospers you. May God use you to touch the lives of others and to be a blessing to others. And may you be blessed yourself. Please share this family. Remember, I'll see you Sunday morning Kingdom Worship Center in Hamilton, 92 Gladencaster Road at Hamilton District Christian High School at 11 a.m. Let's come with expectation. Let's come ready to celebrate Jesus and let's come to bless each other. I love you. Have an awesome night. Remember, please share it. God bless you, everybody.